Good evening, you are watching News on CBC. I'm Eldar Rasulov. Now briefly about the main news for this hour. New anti-record 2,597 new cases of coronavirus infection were detected in Azerbaijan. 23 people died. New restrictions are imposed in the country. Armenians continue to commit environmental terror on the territories of Azerbaijan. Protests in Yerevan continue. People of Armenia demand resignation of Nikol Pashinyan. New anti-record 2,597 cases of coronavirus infection were detected in Azerbaijan. 23 people died. According to the operational headquarters under the Cabinet of Ministers, 1,354 patients were recovered. In order to prevent negative dynamics, new restrictions are imposed in the country. The special quarantine regime in Azerbaijan has been extended until December 28. Public transport, as before, will not work on weekends. Metro in Baku will remain closed. At the end of the week, all facilities will be suspended, except pharmacies and food stores, including food production enterprises, medical institutions, structures providing security and public order in the country, utilities, gas stations, the media and other will work as usual. The rising numbers of COVID-19 cases in Azerbaijan is a matter of serious concern. On average, more than 2,000 people become infected per day. The number of deaths is also growing. Some are self-medicating and this is extremely dangerous. These patients still go to the hospital, but with severe complications. Since November 21, the wearing of masks is mandatory not only in closed rooms, but also in the open air. Monitoring of compliance with these rules will be tightened. Persons aged 65 or above are not advised to leave their homes unless it's necessary. The use of the coronavirus vaccine is not expanded in Azerbaijan in the near future. The use of the vaccine may not be available earlier than April of next year. So this winter we will have to be quarantined. Today we can do 13,000 tests a day. The most effective way to combat the virus so far is to wear masks, self-isolate, keep the distance and use disinfectants. Serious measures are also being taken to prevent coronavirus infection in military hospitals. Treating wounded soldiers is a serious task of our healthcare system. Fortunately, cases of infection were not recorded among the personnel. Conscripts also have special tests so that the virus does not spread in military units. We must defeat coronavirus as much as we defeated the enemy during the patriotic war. Public and private organizations are recommended to reduce the number of employees to 30% and transferred the rest to a remote work. Russia sins in the United States and France wounded self-esteem because of the November 10 statement on Karabakh. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said this in an interview with Russia Today. According to him, it cannot be said that the situation was resolved without the participation of the United States or France. The position of the three co-chairs of the OSCE Minsk Group in favor of an immediate cessation of bloodshed and the development of mechanism for monitoring the ceasefire still had a political, psychological impact on the situation. He believes that this played an important role in the fact that an agreement between the leaders of Azerbaijan, Russia and Armenia was reached and is working. <laughs> Moscow is in regular contact with Baku and Yerevan, coordinating the works on post-conflict settlement. This was stated by the head of the press service of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Maria Zakharova, during a briefing. She mentioned that unconditional implementation of reached agreements is important at the moment. In accordance with the signed trilateral statement by leaders of Russia, Azerbaijan and Armenia, the works on the implementation of reached agreements are being coordinated, mentioned the head of the press service of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Maria Zakharova. It's important to ensure the unconditional implementation of the agreements. We note with the satisfaction that mediating efforts of Russia allowed to ensure the stable ceasefire that was established on November 10, in accordance with the statement by leaders of Russia, Azerbaijan and Armenia. Important steps for returning to a peaceful life have been taken. The head of the press service of MFA of Russia mentioned that the challenge number one is ensuring the safety of people, enabling them to return to their homes, restoration of the infrastructure and creating conditions for their survival and existence. 
Продолжается развертывание российских миротворцев вдоль линии. The process of deployment of Russian peacekeepers throughout the contact line and in Lachin corridor that is connecting Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia is going on. The withdrawal of Armenian military servicemen from Agdam, Kalbachar and Lachin districts also continues. Since November 13, 385 bodies of dead servicemen were handed over. This covers the victims from both sides. Maria Zakharova mentioned that MFA of Russia has discussed the question of exchange of the prisoners of war with the representatives of Red Cross. She also mentioned that high-level experts have been involved for the post-conflict settlement. Leaving the occupied Agdam district of Azerbaijan, Armenians decided to burn everything. They take everything possible with them, cut trees, kill cattle. At the same time, many of them confirm that they have been resettled on these lands in the past 10 years. A similar situation is observed in the Kalbajar district, where Armenians, barbarians even destroyed power lines. It is physically impossible to take everything along, so I decided to burn what is left to the ground, so that there is nothing left for the Azerbaijanis. We remind that tomorrow, according to the trilateral statement on Karabakh, Armenia should return the Agdam district to Azerbaijan. By the way, in the early 90s, as a result of ethnic cleansing, Azerbaijanis were forced to leave their homes, unable to take even the most valuable along with them. Azerbaijanis did not set fire to their houses because they knew that one day they would still return to their native lands. Armenians continue to commit environmental terror in the territories of Azerbaijan. Leaving the Kalbajar district, they deliberately destroy flora and fauna, causing serious damage not only to the ecology of the region, but also to the whole planet. Armenians illegally settled in Kalbajar 27 years ago now leave the district. Committing acts of vandalism, they exterminate all living things, destroy cattle, cut down and export wood, burn forests. Fleeing Armenians have been adopting what we call a scorched earth policy when they are fleeing the formerly occupied regions of Azerbaijan, notably in Kalbajar. Scorched earth policies are the kind that's adopted by totalitarian regimes. Uh, we note this happened particularly during World War II, as you call it, the Great Patriotic War, when fleeing Nazis destroyed everything that they could in their wake as they, re as they left the territories that they had invaded. The destruction of flora and fauna by the aggressor, deforestation, burning of forests are very serious crimes, mentioned the British journalist. So it's extremely sad that poor innocent animals of all description, wildlife and farm animals alike, are dying because of this scorched earth policy and that forests and woodland are being destroyed as well. This is bioterrorism at its very worst, at a time in history when the world is more and more aware of the importance of biodiversity and maintaining nature and the environment for the future of our people. It will take centuries for this territory to ever recover from this fires, these fires. The Ministry of Ecology and Natural Resources, as well as the Office of the Ombudsman of Azerbaijan, appealed to international organizations to stop the environmental genocide committed by the Armenian aggressors. The government of Azerbaijan intends to demand compensation from Armenia for damage, which will be assessed with the help of international experts. The Armenian armed forces used launchers and artisanal missiles during recent battles in the Nagorno-Karabakh region. One of these shells was demonstrated to journalists in the village of Gorgan, Fuzuli district, liberated from occupation. The use of prohibited weapons against civilians is unacceptable. However, non-norms and principles of international law stopped Armenia. The armed forces of this country suffering defeats on the battlefield sent aside to densely populated cities and districts of Azerbaijan, far from the conflict zone. As a result of the military aggression of Armenia, about a hundred civilians were killed. Currently, Azerbaijan National Agency for Mine Action continues to clear areas of unexploded ordnance. Since September 27th, mobile special groups of the agency have been cleaning up areas from mines and unexploded ordnance. Currently, work is ongoing. The Armenian Armed Forces dropped more than 1,300 cluster bombs on Azerbaijani settlements. In addition, about 500 unexploded ordnance, more than 1,000 anti-tank mines and about 4,000 anti-personal mines were discovered as a result of field search. According to Monitor, 85% of the territories will be cleared of mines and unexploded ordnance. 
The Special Investigation Service of Armenia has started gathering materials in regard with the publication of the Prime Minister on Facebook. Let's recall that he has called the protesters whimpering beneath the wall and appealed to the military to help him finally deal with the opposition. At the same time, Pashinyan is trying to restore the trust of the population in vain. Theatrical performance directed by Nikol Pashinyan. This is how Armenia calls the action in support of the Prime Minister, which took place in the center of Yerevan. Nikol Pashinyan nevertheless came out to his supporters with a rather short speech. The Armenian Prime Minister was closely surrounded by his numerous bodyguards. The rally of Pashinyan's supporters was organized with the help of administrative resources, claims the leaders of opposition. According to our data that we have been receiving for several days, the group of people that are supposedly supporting Nikol Pashinyan is doing so in exchange of some payment or services. About 100 people went there and pretended that they are supporting Nikol Pashinyan. However, no one had to be involved in the protest against Pashinyan. Thousands of people voluntarily took to the streets of Yerevan, demanding the resignation of the prime minister. The protesters intend to overthrow the Armenian prime minister. Even Russian President Vladimir Putin was not able to persuade them. Nikol Pashinyan does not have a sense of responsibility. Interview of President of Russia caused delight among the supporters of Pashinyan. They have taken his words out of a context, claiming that he should not be treated as a traitor. Do you really think that Russian president would say that Nikol is a traitor? All of the defeats are fault of Pashinyan. People of Armenia understand this. The demonstrators claim Pashinyan had two and a half years to carry out the promised reforms and strengthen Armenia, but during this time he did not achieve any success. Now the Armenian prime minister and his retinue have again started the political persecution. Dozens of opposition representatives were detained. However, the protesters do not intend to stop. The next protest action against Nikol Pashinyan is scheduled for November 21st. The video footage of the destroyed house museum of a great Azerbaijani performer Bülbül in city of Shusha is published on the internet. This is a parental house of the ambassador of Azerbaijan to Russia, Polat Bülbüloğlu. On November 8 of this year, the city of Shusha, which is a home of outstanding representatives of Azerbaijani and world culture, was liberated from Armenian occupation after 27 and a half years. The Cradle of Azerbaijan Music, Conservator of the Caucasus, City of Talents. This is how the Azerbaijan City of Shusha is called. Many outstanding figures of culture and art, artists, composers, filmmakers, painters, poets and writers come from this once colorful and hospitable city. First time a musical performance in the Azerbaijan language, Lilia Majnun, was staged here. The poets Mola Panahvagiv, Khushud Banuna Tavan, composers Uzir Hachibeli, Niazi, the popular performer Mejid Behbudov, the father of the no less famous Rashid Behbudov, were born here. The luminary of the national art of singing, Murtuza Mashadi Mamedov, better known for his extraordinary musical abilities as Bulbul, the Nightingale, was also from Shusha. It was him who synthesized the best techniques of Azerbaijan and national singing with Russian and European classical traditions and created a new vocal school in Azerbaijan. Bülbül began his career as a singer, performing mugams and folk songs. Then he became a soloist of the Azerbaijan State Theatre. After completing his studies as a Baku Conservatory, he completed an internship in La Scala that lasted four years. 
a musician to the core of his soul, Bilbur devoted more than a quarter of a century of his life to collecting, recording, studying and publishing folk music. But even this did not seem enough to him. On the initiative of Bilbul, an opera studio, a recording room, a music publishing house, a special class for solo singing were created. The first music Olympiad was convened. All union vocal conferences were held thanks to him. I have been in Shusha a lot, especially in my childhood with my father. For the last time I was there with him in August of 1961. Father told me, I want to go to Shusha, but do not tell anyone. I was worried. Why shouldn't we tell anyone? Of course, I told my mother that father is planning to go to Shusha. He gave two farewell concerts there. That was the end of August. On September 26, he was gone. Это был конец августа. 26 сентября ушел. After the occupation, the ambassador of Azerbaijan to Russia was able to visit parental house in Shusha, only twice with a delegation of figures of Azerbaijan and Armenian culture, in 2007 and 2009. There are not the best memories for the ambassador. The house of Bilbul was destroyed as a result of Armenian aggression. I was hardly controlling myself when we saw the house of Bülbül. It set my nerves to edge. Polat was trying to call me down, telling bring it on. It was very harsh to perceive what we had seen. A prosperous land, flourishing city that was full with the greatest people of Azerbaijan. And then we saw those ruins. In an interview to CBC on the occasion of the 75 years old jubilee, Polat Bilbaloglu told that he has only one wish – give a concert in Shusha, just like his dad did. There is not much left till the realization of his wish. For 27 and a half years, Azerbaijan city was under the occupation of armed forces of Armenia. A new countdown has started for Shusha since the November 8. On this date, President Ilham Aliyev announced the long-awaited news. We have come back, dear Shusha. That's all for this edition. Stay tuned for the latest news on CBC. Watch us online through our social media platforms and see you soon.